Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had not known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the um, As it says, um, the saying goes that man proposes, God disposes. So, like Steve said, we prepare. I prepared and did a lot of notes, but God wants something else. So we're just going to listen to what the Lord has said today. Now the Bible verse that we have read is one that I was thinking of choosing my own once again. But I have stuck with the one that is in the reading for today because um, the Holy Spirit seemed to remind me that it is what he wants for us to hear at this time. Steve was speaking earlier and said about the things that came up during prayer time. And one of those things was, actually I forgot I don't have to actually stand still. I have a microphone on. <laughs> Sorry, no matter how many times I do this, I forget. Anyway, uh, one of those things was, you know, listening to the voice of God. Ellie have spoken this morning how listening to the voice of God through what, you know, um, God have done in her life. And so Joy is here this morning listening to the voice of God. And we talked about distractions and we have prayed that the Lord will take away distractions this morning so we can hear him. Hear what he said from the reading this morning. Luke chapter 12. If we look at it in a whole, it's Jesus speaking to his people. And from the beginning, he warns about hypocrisy. After warning, of, warning them about hypocrisy, he went on to, you know, Tell them parables of the rich fool. See, when we rely on earthly things, and when we think what we own is more important than living some life that you think is beneath you. Some of us, we think, you know, if I live my life this way, it's best then people will respect me. If I have, you know, a big mansion and I have everything I need, that is what life is all about. And Christ reminded them, you know, in a couple of verses at the top, in verse 15, uh, because somebody in the crowd asked him a, a question and he warned them, to take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things they possess. Your life does not consist of the things that you possess. You will see that same theme comes up in these verses, the verses that we have read. 
there are a few things that come up in this chapter, you know, this bit of the verses that we've read. Three things I want us to consider. One of them is that, you know, we should not be afraid, which is what it says in verse 32 when we start. Say, don't be afraid. Can you remember some people in the Bible that the, when the Lord spoke to them first time, he said to them, don't be afraid. It's like today if you have the queen just appear in front of your house and says, Steve, the first thing you would think was, what have I done? And in the same way, you know, God is speaking to this Abraham. When he appeared to speak to Abraham, he says, don't be afraid. When he appeared to Moses to speak to Moses, he said, don't be afraid. When he appeared and sent the angel Gabriel to speak to Mary, what did he say to them again? Don't be afraid. Whatever we are carrying in this world, fear is something that is not good. The Lord has given us the spirit of, you know, sound mind, boldness. If we serve a God that is greater than all the problems we have, how about relying on him? Now, the Christians in those days, I mean, the the disciples, when they were together and he was speaking to them, and the few people that came to listen, there were not many, just like we are not many today. We are not many, but God has given us a job to do. And he's saying, you folks that are left over in Christ church, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I have a job for you. I have a job for you. Are you prepared to do that job? So when I was preparing um, <laughs> the first notes I wrote, uh, and I, I put the, the title as, you know, are we ready? Are we ready to do what he has given to us to do as a church? He told them not to be afraid, for it gives our Father God has pleasure in giving us the kingdom, in preparing us in the way that he wants us to do the things he wants us to do. We don't think we have the right education to go and share our experience with somebody. We don't think we have the right, you know, knowledge of the Bible to share our own story. But you know what? The best story you can tell is yours. And God has given you that story for a reason. So you can go out there and say, just like Ellie did this morning, get up to say, this is what God has done for me. In verse 33, it goes down to say, you know, sell your possessions. And give to those in need. This will store up treasures in heaven for us. What are the possessions that we need to sell? In order to do the work that God has given to us to do. How do we go about doing that? Some of us are in places where God is saying to us. Move an inch. Or go and sit in this place and we're saying to God, (laughs) that that chair is dirty. I don't want to go and sit there. God is telling you, move from the job you are doing. And you say, well, if I move from that job, how am I going to eat? But he's saying... If the God that uh, really, if the God that we serve today is the same God that was, which I know He is, what did He do for the Israelites when they were in the wilderness? The wilderness. He provided for them. 
He gave them manna when there was nothing to eat. After they're knowing that, oh, they will want some meat, he gave them quail to eat. He provided along the way. You know, when you read Genesis, it says that even for, you know, for them being in the wilderness for 40 years, the clothes they wore did not even fade. That is the power of the God we serve. He's saying, sell what you have and give to the poor. Who are the poor among us? Now, don't look at anybody thinking, oh, they're talking about poor people as if they don't, it's, it's only those who don't have food to eat that those are the, only, the poor people. No. There are people in need in our midst. Who is God laying in your heart to bless? And you have said, well, I don't really speak to that person. Who is God saying to you, open up your life and bring this person close to you? Because your time is precious. It's part of your possession that you don't want to actually misuse. But God is saying to you today, you know, like give away that time. Sell it. Give the time away to your brother, your sister. But when you're doing that, he's not looking at it like, you know, yeah, she's done it, that's it. But he will bless you. He will replenish it. And when you're doing it, apart from him replenishing you on this earth, you are actually storing riches in heaven. So what is it right now as you listen? that God is speaking to you about. <clears throat> when we were speaking earlier, one of the things that God was speaking to me about this week, you know, speak to me, Lord. This, this song just came so strongly last night. Speak to me, Lord. It's a song, it's a prayer song. Speak to me, Lord. Speak a word of life that I may live. And how do you hear this? Is that still small voice that you hear and you ignore all the time. Bless his soul. Ted, when he was alive, we had the guy here speaking to us and we were in groups, you know, going over what has been spoken. And Ted said to me, because the man was saying, you know, what is God speaking to us about? And Ted said to me, he said, but I don't really hear him. But you know what? That is the lie and the destruction of the enemy, like we were, the word that God gave this morning here when we were praying. That's a distraction. That's a lie. Because the Lord speaks to us all the time. I look at it this way, that God actually, sometimes me, I am a very... Sometimes very deaf and stubborn child to say. And I feel like God really drags me by the ear and listen to what I'm telling you. This person, you know, you send somebody. The word will come through, you know, either speaking, maybe Ted is speaking to me. I say, Betty, do you know? This? And I'm thinking, okay, I've heard this word before. Or, you know, I come to church and the music, the worship is going on and really the songs that are being sung that day will be like, okay, yeah, I hear you. Lord, I hear you. Sometimes when you see me crying, it's not because I don't like the song, it's because it's reminding me of what he's telling me that I have not been listening. What is it God is trying to get you to lay aside, sell off, and make your brother or your sister's life more meaningful. What is he trying to get us as a church to do? Are we ready to receive new people into the church? 
The song we listened to earlier says, Lord, start your revival with who? Me. Start the revival with me. We pray for people to come in, but are we ready in our spirit? Are we ready in ourselves to receive the people that are going to walk through the door? It's no point God sending, you know, this church full up and they go back worse than they come. That's not how it is. I remember when I walked into this church first time, nobody said hello to me. We need to be prepared to love on the people that come in. We need to pre be prepared to show them the love of Christ. How? How are we loving on the people? How are we showing God's love? I remember a little boy said, you know, oh, I went to Sunday school and the teacher said we should go and love our neighbors. So he went, gathered his toys, <laughs> went and knocked on the neighbor's door. Um, I was told to share my love with you. That is all he knows to share. But that was wonderful. The neighbor might not need the toys because they didn't even have a little child like him. But that's what he owned to give. That is the love he knew to give. Growing up, you know, when we see new people come in our area, what we are taught to do to welcome them, take something to give to them. We, you know, we cook and give to them. It's what we have. It's what we know to give. In a way, we're selling what we have to make this person comfortable. And that will make them know that, come, you can come into our house. Our house is an open house. It's an African thing. Anybody can walk into your house, even if they're just passing, and knock the door. Are you in? And they'll come to eat, to drink. It's, it's, you know, it's a done deal. We have a village near me that if you go to, the, go to their house, they will ask you, do you bother for some food? But the other village is cursed them because that is not how to do it. You should be prepared to cook, put in front of your visitor. If they say they don't want it, fine. If you're asking me, do I bother to eat? I'll say no. In a way, you didn't want to give me in the first place. So what is it that we need to change in our lives? to make those that are going to walk through that door more comfortable? Are we ready to receive them? The revival that is coming, are we prepared? How are we going to do that? You know, if I want to just go and piece this passage down, the next bit, you know, between 35 and going, oh, he said, be ready for the Lord's coming. In the same way that I've just been speaking about being ready for people that God is being bringing into, will be bringing into the church. Same way we need to prepare our minds for the coming of the Lord. You know, we, you know when we read the Bible of um, the virgins that we're not ready when the Lord came. If we are not ready, if we are not prepared, we cannot be like Paul that says, you know, I have run the race. How about that? That we are so prepared and so ready that the first person that comes will be overwhelmed with the love and the support that they, need, they get from Christ church even if they don't want to come to church or they don't want to, you know, 
talk to anybody tomorrow, they will feel lost. Lost for the love that, you know, they're going to lose if they don't come in. On Tuesday here, we have people from the community that come here to help, to serve. They give. They give their lives. Some of them are not even Christians, but that is what they want. They, they feel called to do. Last Tuesday, one came in. I wasn't here on time. She actually just left her son and went in the kitchen and helped. He's, she's giving something. She's serving. Do you know? She longs to come here every time, even though she doesn't belong to the church family. One said to me, he said, Betty, it's so nice to be here. I feel like part of a family. That is what we want here in Christ Church. Let the world see the light of God in you. Let them see Christ through you. Let our cry always be, Father, send your revival. Lord, send your revival to Christ church. But Father, more than ever, start with me because I am unclean. I am not worthy I am not worthy to be called your son. As the prodigal son said, I am not worthy. But God's love is so great. His love is wonderful. He loves us in spite of all our flaws. Verse 40 of that th- of the verse the passage we read says you must be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when you least expect. So Tim is coming very soon. How are we going to welcome him? Are we ready to show him? God's love, Christ's love. We're in Christ's church. Are we going to give him unbiased attention and unbiased, you know, support? Are we going to sell our pride and sell our old ways and do God's way? And, you know, we as human beings can be set in our own ways, really. I could come and say, okay, yeah, this is how I do things in the Anglican communion in Nigeria. And, you know, this is how it should be done. But hey, he's got his training in a different way. And it's for me to let him walk in what God has called him to do for Christ's church. So, are we going to open our hearts and open our doors and welcome him in and show him how wonderful we can be as a family? Are we going to just sell every pre- conceived plans or, you know, everything we think we're going to do and ask him, how do you want us to go? What is the Lord saying to you that we as a family should do? How can we as a family grow together? May the Lord start his revival and may he start it all with us. That is what I, I, you know, I'm going to end with that. The Lord will start revival, start with us. Um, I said the
three things that I said we should pick up from this, that we shouldn't be afraid. Secondly, we should store up heavenly treasures. So in serving God and serving ourselves, we're doing just that. We're storing up treasures in heaven. And third, we should be ready for the kingdom of God. How do we get ready? Just doing his will. Being his mouthpiece. Really living his way of life. The Bible, as it says, is our roadmap. If we follow what it says, then we are doing his will. And he will direct our ways. I'm going to end there. And I pray that the Lord will speak to our hearts, even as we go home today, to give us opportunities to show the world who he is through the way we live, the way we act, and how we show them the love of Christ. Be your brother and your sister's keeper. By so doing, you'll be showing them God's love more than you can even quote the Bible. 